airways and come back again just to keep conscious. Yes, yeah, travellers rest at cross case. We need an ambulance quick. Yeah, I think someone's been shot in the car park. Moments later, the Cavalier was seen speeding down Brian Crescent nearby, closely followed by a silver Ford Orion. The attacker um, who shot me, I really would like to ask the man face to face why he would want to shoot me. I have nothing against anyone at all, especially when I gave him the bag. I can't understand why he would want to shoot me. I have two daughters. I have a, a husband and I have family. He could have robbed a lot of people of one person. Well, John Chambers, Marion was very lucky to survive that shot. Well, it was more than lucky. It was practically a miracle because the bullet went straight through her neck and it missed a jugular vein and a spinal column by fractions of an inch. And she still hasn't fully recovered, has she? No, she still hasn't fully recovered. I anticipate she will recover physically, um, but it'll take a while for her to recover mentally. Mm. Now, we saw at the end of the film the attackers driving off in the Silver Cavalier, followed by a Silver Orion. You're, you're sure that Orion was involved in the incident? Yes, we believe that the Orion was also used by the attackers. It's a Silver Orion. It's a 1.6 gear injection. We're keen to trace that vehicle. The Cavalier was abandoned six-tenths of a mile away in Sandway, near to the junction with the York Road. We believe they transferred to the Orion and would like to hear from anyone who might have seen them. And another positive thing, you do have a very good descriptions of the suspects. Yes, we do. The first man is uh, about 25 years of age. He's five foot eight inches tall with a stocky build. He has short blonde hair. Um, he was wearing a brown stonewashed jacket and blue jeans. The second man again 25 years of age with a heavy build he has dark brown hair and a very distinctive bushy moustache he's described as wearing a, a, a tan leather bomber jacket and dark trousers what about the third man the man who seemed to be laughing to himself sitting in the cavalier in the traveller's rest car park well we have a, an artist's impression of him he's described as being in his late twenties he's got a thin face a small chin, and his hair is described as mousy, uh, short and neatly cut. Do you know which of the men fired the gun? No, we don't, because they were, the gunman was wearing uh, a ski mask similar to this. Right, and that's... Um... Um, it's, note it's got distinctive red stitching or red piping around the face. It is very hard to understand why the man shot Marion even though he'd taken the money. What sort of person do you think you're dealing with? Well, he's obviously a very dangerous man indeed. As the, fi as the film has shown, she handed over the bag, she did it exactly as he required, and he quite calmly, quite deliberately, shot her in the face. This man is clearly very violent, he's very, very irrational, he must be caught, uh, because the next victim might not be so lucky. Right, it's very important that you do ring if you, if you can help us at all with that then. Detective Inspector Chambers and his colleagues are waiting here for your call and this is the number here of course, 081 811 8181 or you can call Milgarth Police Station in Leeds Direct and that's 0532 413022. That's 0532, the code for Leeds, 413022. More news from last month's programme. Uh, we showed clothing that had been stolen including these Wrangler t-shirts made in Egypt. Six tonnes of them had been stolen. And Cromart viewers all around the country rang to say they'd seen them. As a direct result, three men have been arrested and charges are now pending. There were also important calls on the murder of Jim Morrison, an off-duty police officer who chased a handbag thief through the streets of London's Covent Garden. The stolen handbag was recovered close to where Mr Robin Morrison was stabbed. The bag contained items from several other robberies and a Crime Watch viewer recognised some of the contents as hers. That's helped to pin down some of the thief's movements. Other calls have helped eliminate a number of suspects, but uh, meanwhile, the search for Mr. Morrison's killer goes on. There are so far fairly few calls on the uh, John Shippey murder. Still very anxious to find where his blue 
Ford Sierra Sapphire was between the 15th and the 18th of December, thought to be in the South London, Croydon, Surrey areas. We've got a name given, though, for the horse for armed robbery, and uh, Edward Terence Willis, uh, the sighting of him, and we think of uh, Edward Crookshank. And as you can see, quite a lot of calls coming in right now. Let's go now for this month's uh, incident desk. Here are Detective Constable Jackie Hames and Superintendent David Hatcher. First tonight, a particularly tragic case. 25-year-old Barry Bradley was murdered for shouting at a motorist. It happened in Kingsley Road, Hounslow, on Friday the 31st of January. Just before midnight, Barry and his fiancée left an Indian restaurant. As they crossed over the road, a speeding car almost hit them. Barry shouted at the driver, who did a U-turn and came back towards them. He opened the window and Barry leant into the car. Moments later, he collapsed in the street. Barry had been stabbed and later that night he died in hospital. The car was a dark-coloured two-door hatchback. The driver was alone and looked Asian. He was about five foot eight tall in his early twenties with black straight hair. He had wispy hair on his jawline and cheeks with a thin moustache and was well-spoken. Buses run regularly down Kingsley Road even at midnight and Hounslow East tube station is nearby so we feel sure somebody must have seen something. If you recognise the man, or can help in any way, please call. Remember, it was murder and there is a reward. Crawley police need your help to catch a jewel thief. He'd made a poor attempt to disguise himself with boot polish and was chased by police from the shop. On Wednesday the 1st of April, the alarm went off at this jeweller's and police arrived to see a man on the roof. He ran off and in his haste dropped this bag. Do you recognise it or do you know who used it? He's white, in his mid-twenties, and about 5 foot 11. And finally, how two quick-thinking counter-assistants stopped an armed robbery at a post office. On Tuesday the 25th of February at 20 past three, a man went into Heath Hayes post office in Cannock. He was armed, and seconds after demanding money, he fired a shot at the assistants. Luckily, neither was injured as the bullet hit the glass security screen. They dived to the floor and managed to press the panic button. The man then ran off and got into this stolen Vauxhall Cavalier, which was later found abandoned three quarters of a mile away in Hill Street. We believe this man is the robber. He was seen earlier in the day outside the post office in the Red Cavalier. He's in his late twenties and has thick brown hair with prominent dark eyebrows. It's likely he was also responsible for a series of house burglaries committed earlier that day in the West Midlands area. If you can help on this, or any of our other incident desk cases, please call. Here's the number. And eight number one. as ever, 081 811 8181. That's 081 Collecting the calls here, we've had uh, one very prompt call after the shooting of Marion in Kirkstall in Leeds. Uh, the caller is given a name, which is being followed up yeah. now. Um, yeah. One call on the Seaco watch has been received, similar to the one that John Shippey wore. Uh, the missing that has gone missing. A report on a briefcase, similar to one of John Shippey's briefcases. We're having a lot of calls on the photocall cases at the moment, and some more calls on the John Shippey murder. So uh, we'll keep you posted. Crime Watch doesn't make appeals for missing persons. If someone chooses to make off without telling family or friends, well, you know, it may be reckless, selfish, thoughtless of the worry that they'll have caused, but it's not a crime. Tonight, though, I'm asking one person, please call home. Dinah McNichol, if you're watching, will you call your father, your grandma, or Sarah? All of them are waiting by the phone right now. All they want to hear is that you're alive and well. The fact is that Sergeant Derek Nichol here fears that Dinah has been abducted and may be dead. Dinah's family and friends and one of her teachers have taken part in our reconstruction of the days that led up to her disappearance. None of them has seen her since she went to a rock festival last August. And with the festival season due to start again soon, this appeal is aimed especially at anyone who saw Dinah last year. So how's everything going then? It's going really great actually. I'm getting on really well with Dad, which is great. Before she vanished, Dinah was in good spirits. She'd finished her A-levels and had told her father she'd spend the summer unwinding, maybe travelling. In 1980, her mother was killed in a traffic accident. She was forced to grow up rather quickly. Um, maybe go to India or somewhere. She did admire what her sister had done, and uh, her elder sister, and she wanted to do some sort of thing, like uh, do all her studies, get her A-levels, and uh, go to college or university. 
Diner had been quiet.